Good morning, everybody, and happy Wednesday. Welcome to another edition of Freight Waves Now. I'm your host, Kaylee Nix, here with Anthony Smith. That's right. And coming up, we'll talk about misconceptions people have about shipping the shipping industry. We'll look into the heat dome in the eastern U.S. and we'll start. <laughs> it is Gross. hot. It is so hot and I love it. Ugh. I wish it was even hotter. <laughs> coming up <laughs> in our weather segment. And we'll dive into our freight waves mailbag. But first, let's get into our top story, talking about e-commerce in Latin America with our Borderlands writer, Noy Mahoney. Noy, thank you for joining us. The story is something that we touched on a little bit yesterday, and it's really exciting to see all the opportunities for e-commerce shippers that are really taking hold, not only in Mexico, but in other Latin American and even, even South American countries. Talk to us a little bit about what's going on with opportunities for e-commerce shippers. Uh, well, e-commerce has really been growing the past 10 years in uh, Mexico, but it's really been the past two or three, year, two or three years we've seen a really uh, significant jump Probably has a lot to do with COVID and you know other situations, but uh, a lot of people think that in the next few years, the e-commerce in Mexico and Latin America is going to grow at least you know 18% year over year uh, in the coming years. And Noy, when you think about this current growth, what do you see as some of the drivers for this trend? Because I know from my econ background, we've been looking at Mexico as being one of those huge areas of growth. Why do you think? This has catapulted so much. Do you think it's all because of COVID or are there other factors at play here? I think COVID plays a part, but, um, you know, based on my conversations with our, our interviews with people uh, that work in Mexico e-commerce and e-commerce in general, um, you know, there's uh, an increased, growth, increased use of the Internet in Mexico uh, and there's more um, people using smartphones. There's also a sort of a generational shift from what I've been told going on in Mexico, where younger generations feel more comfortable buying things online or over the phone or buying products without actually, you know, trying on the shoes or trying on the clothing, whereas older generations, um, you know, they're more used to transactions with cash, you know, face-to-face -face transactions. So it's almost a generational thing going on down there too. I think that's a really good point. And it's interesting when you talk about the generational differences because that can kind of either hinder or help growth in really any sector. One of the interesting things that I saw in your article yesterday, Noy, is the fact that food delivery services are something that's kind of helping that growth along as well, especially in some of the really dense city populations. Can you talk a little bit about that and then how kind of food delivery services might even kind of push that growth outside of the populated city centers, maybe into some of those more rural areas? You know, it's interesting because uh, I was actually in Mexico City for vacation uh, back in May. And um, I saw with my own eyes delivery, you know, people on motor scooters with, uh, you know, food in a container, you know, constantly. That's all I saw on the streets of Mexico City. And so it wasn't a surprise to learn that food delivery is actually the top uh, Internet service or e-commerce service that people are buying right now. Um, and you bring up an interesting point is. You know, in a place like Mexico City, it's really dense, so it, it's sort of a um, a given that that will be a success in in a, in a densely populated city. But will it will it also be uh, as successful in uh, other parts of uh, Mexico? And I think it will because um, you know Mexico is not too different from the U.S., where people want their food. They don't want to some some people don't want to leave their house. They just want to sit in front of their TV after work and watch you know their favorite shows. And I think food delivery is uh, is going to be one of the biggest grow growing markets in uh, e-commerce in Mexico. Definitely sounds like that's going to be one of those areas in the charge. When you look at this segment right now, do you see this as something that's being driven by Latin America, or is there any influence or impact coming from the U.S.? Um, actually, there's a huge influence coming from the U.S. Um, I was for the article I did on Sunday. I interviewed uh, Eduardo Lopez Soriano. And he is a marketing director at UPS Capital, which is the uh, shipping experience and insurance arm of UPS, you know, United Parcel Service. And what Lopez Soriano told me was about 40 percent of um, e-commerce sales come from U.S., comes from the U.S. to Mexico. And so Amazon is one of the biggest e-commerce retailers in Mexico. So is Walmart. And there's an Argentinian 
e-commerce company called Mercado Libre, and they're also very large in Mexico. And another big player in Mexico e-commerce is a company called Shine, which is a, a Chinese company. So you have, you know, the U.S. is probably the biggest player in uh, in in the Mexico e-commerce market with Mercado Libre we're right there with them. And then you have these other players like Shine, Chinese companies. So it's really an international thing going on in Mexico e-commerce. So let's head a little bit further south into Latin America and talk a little bit about the opportunities in Ecuador and Brazil, which are some companies that I don't think come to the top of mind when we think about being leaders in e-commerce growth. How are they fitting into the e-commerce sector right now and where are they getting their influence from? Is it from Mexico and just kind of trickling down into Central and South America or is it also still that United States influence? I think, uh, you know, Brazil is actually, in Latin America, they're number one, followed by um, Mexico at number two in terms of e-commerce sales. Uh, I think Brazil last year in 2021 had $33 billion in uh, e-commerce sales, while Mexico had about $21 billion. But Brazil and also Ecuador, um, these are countries where you have very young population. Uh, and as in other countries, the younger population is comfortable using, you know, smartphones and the internet. And I think that's one of the reasons you see growth uh, happening very quickly in those countries. And um, in, in Brazil, I believe Amazon is also there and you, Mercado Libre, which is uh, the Argentinian company I mentioned a minute ago, they're very big in Brazil and Ecuador. And um, Mercado Libre is trying to become basically the Amazon of Latin America. And they're doing a pretty good job. Uh, because uh, I saw their cars and trucks everywhere when I was in Mexico City uh, last month. And knowing when you think of uh, Mexico and Latin America, how effective or how successful is dropshipping right now? You know, dropshipping is interesting in uh, Mexico and Latin America. I heard I heard about this, you know, back in 2016, where entrepreneurs were, you know, renting a warehouse in somewhere in Mexico, and you know. Uh, getting electronics from uh, companies like AliExpress or uh, or Sell Who, I think it is, and just having this supply of merchandise in this warehouse and then contacting retailers and saying, hey, if you need electronics or if you need, you know, sh shoes, uh, I got them for you. So has been very successful uh, for entrepreneurs who are willing to work hard and work smart. And uh, I think it's going to just keep growing in Latin America drop shipping. Because almost anybody can do it. If you have a little bit of capital, you can find a warehouse and you can, you know, market your products to uh, retailers. It, it, it's, it's a great business model. And with that, that kind of feeds into the opportunities for these small to medium businesses, right? Because if maybe you're a small to medium e-commerce shipper and you haven't quite broken into the market yet, there's an opportunity to do that and to build some of that customer loyalty in the cross-border trade. But with that comes a pretty hefty expense, right? Especially if you're based in the United States. Can you touch a little bit about that and how, if you're a small to medium business, maybe looking into cross-border shipping or cross-border e-commerce opportunities, what are some of those bigger hurdles that you have to get through first? Well, obviously, um, if you're shipping cross-borders, it's going to be more expensive and you're also going to have to deal with more paperwork and, uh, you know, customs issues and, you know, it's going to take longer. Um, but as uh, Eduardo Lopez Soriano told me in his interview, he said, you know, when somebody in Mexico orders something off of Amazon from a retailer in the U.S., they kind of have this expectation it's not going to be, you know, same day or two day delivery. Um, so in Mexico, when somebody orders some from Amazon, maybe they're going to be a little more patient uh, about you know receiving their merchandise, not too not too impatient because they still want their stuff on time and undamaged, as uh, Lopez Soriano told me. But the challenges are you know working with people that are you know reliable that have shipped cross border before that know what they're doing, and you know companies like Amazon, Shine, uh, Mercado Libre, they have it down to a science, you know, so they know what they're doing and uh, they get the job done most of the time or almost all the time. No, when it comes to Mexico, this is definitely an area, a country that I've been extremely excited about with its growth potential and trajectory. With this recent development and ongoing trends here, what does this look like for investments in their infrastructure or potential manufacturing as we continue to move forward in the next coming years? 
you know, it's interesting. Uh, yesterday, I was interviewing a, a company called Cargamos, and they're a micro fulfillment company that's based in Mexico City. And I asked them the same question, you know, what what are the challenges for Mexico's e-commerce growth? And um, I asked him was investment one of them, and he said, "No, you know, we're getting a lot of foreign investment. Some of our some of their issues, from from what they told me, are just you know, infrastructure such as roads, um, you know, and just having enough like warehouses, fulfillment centers, you know, uh, transportation, cars and trucks, just to get the just to meet the demand because the man demand right now is growing faster than uh, anything else, and so." They just need, you know, the, the physical tools to get the products to the people and, you know, investments from the Mexican government, such as making sure the roads, uh, infrastructure can meet, and, you know, all these, I guess, more more cars and transportation are going to be on the road. And then, Noy, in the last time that we chatted, we talked a little bit about kind of the nearshoring efforts for companies moving to Mexico and maybe looking to send their opportunities from other outside international sources to Mexico itself. Do you think that companies looking to nearshore or to reshore in Mexico are going to have better opportunities when it comes to their e-commerce shipments now by taking that opportunity? And are those companies that are looking at Mexico as an option now encouraged by seeing this e-commerce growth? Well, anytime you see... Um uh, a country where people are spending money. That's very encouraging for any company. Um, I think nearshoring, um, it's been happening and it's going to continue to happen in Mexico, especially for manufacturing. Um, it makes sense because, you know, Mexico is right next door to the U S. So if you can get your operations in Mexico, you can save a lot of money on just transportation and shipping. Uh, you know, you can save millions and millions of dollars just on that alone. So I think we're going to see more of that. And I think, you know, companies are encouraged by what they see going on in Mexico. They see a stable society. You know, the economy is a little bit up and down, but that has to do with, you know, global issues as well as most countries are facing the same issues. So I think we'll continue to see more nearshoring. Uh, E-commerce is going to continue to grow. And, you know, right now I would say that things are looking good for Mexican economy in terms of e-commerce and uh, investment from manufacturers. Definitely sounds like a lot of opportunity and growth happening. Noy, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And you can catch Noy Mahoney's Borderlands, his weekly update on cross-border shipping every Sunday up on FreightWaves.com. Right now we're going to head over to the wall. We've got our first carrier update of the morning with Johnny and Tony.